So as promised, this is the best pick every team made in the 2021 NFL Draft. If you guys are new here, please hit that subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me, and you're going to miss out on all the draft content that's on this channel already and in the future if you don't. So it's free. Scroll down. It takes a second to hit that subscribe button. We get to talk about the best pick today. It's a fun, upbeat video. The last video uploaded was the worst pick made by every team. Thankfully, a lot of these worst picks really weren't even bad in some cases. This one is more upbeat, though, because we get to talk about some awesome steals some awesome value picks and some really good players going to some really good situations so let's talk about every team's best pick starting with the dallas cowboys the cowboys were a team that they didn't draft as well as some other teams did in this draft but they still got some good value picks michael parsons should be a pretty good scheme fit for the defense long term so i like his potential to develop just needs to be in a situation where he's not forced to play his own coverage more often than not however my favorite pick is kelvin joseph i think he has really really good potential he got suspended and missed a game so there were pot some potential off the field issues with him but he's a really really good corner i think he has the ability to play press man with anybody and he has some of the better zone instincts in the draft really really good athlete as well good size i love kelvin joseph in the dan quinn system should be a very good corner on the other side of trayvon diggs even though we have some questions with him. Now, my favorite team, the New York Giants. And I think they drafted fairly well. I think the best pick, though, was Aziz Ojolari. When you consider the value of getting a player of his caliber at number 50 overall in the draft, I know he fell because of a degenerative knee issue, a lower leg potential injury is what they're saying. I know he tore his ACL in high school, but then after redshirting, played every single game of his college career. Aziz Ojolari is a player that's super fun. And the fact that the Giants were able to get him at number 50 overall and address a glaring need on the edge to get big time pass rush on the edge with an athletic off the or not off the ball linebacker, but an athletic on the ball linebacker, even though I've never said that expression before. I think the Giants got a really, really good player, someone that could have gone in the first round and they got him at number 50. This is an excellent pick. The Philadelphia Eagles, they made a big time move to go up and get Devontae Smith at number 10 overall they jumped the giants who almost certainly would have taken him he's a really really good player excellent route runner he's got solid hands as well is going to offer a lot for the eagles even out of the backfield and on on screens and stuff Devonte smith is a versatile guy who you want to get the football to and more often than not he makes it very easy as he gets wide open Devonte smith is a stud definitely in my opinion the best pick made by the eagles yeah they traded up to get him but they stole him from a division rival in the giants who would have taken him at number 11 overall and they addressed a glaring need at receiver washington football team's a team that drafted really really well and i'm tempted to say that jamin davis was their best pick just because i think he fits the defense really really well love jamin davis to washington football team even though i i hate it as a fan of a rival team but i think it's a great fit he's going to fit really really nicely at weak side linebacker however i think their best pick was diami brown this is a team that needed to address receiver at some point even after signing curtis samuel and to get one of the better deep threats in the draft at number 82 overall i think is exceptional value he fits the offense you can have curtis samuel in the slot we know we got scary terry on the outside he's a monster but to get another big time deep threat in diami brown at number 82 overall great pick I loved the Jets draft. Loved it, loved it, loved it. They didn't focus on defense. They just said, let's get so many great playmakers around our, our young, new rookie quarterback in Zach Wilson. And I can't hate on it. Moved up for Elijah Vera Tucker. And some guys say they traded too much, but at some point, you got to turn those picks into players. Why acquire all these picks if you can't trade up for a guy that is not only an excellent scheme fit, but an excellent player? And I, I love the Zach Wilson pick and the Elijah Moore pick. However, I think their best pick was Michael Carter in the fourth round great value for him i think he's a guy that could have gone round two or round three and to be a potential starting running back in new york i think michael carter has a type of potential he was one of my favorite prospects in the entire draft and they got him at the top of the fourth round i just think it's a great pick for a team that needed a running back the patriots were another team that drafted really really well i could say that about so many different teams but it's certainly true of the patriots even though i don't love mac jones as a prospect i think he's going to be really good with the patriots christian barmore they did a good job to take a chance on him and you could say that ronnie perkins was a big time steal and he was he's undersized but he's really really good however i think their best pick was cameron mcgrone in the fifth round i love mcgrone as a prospect he tore his acl in 2020 so that's a big time concern but if you get the 2019 cameron mcgrone that can play sideline to sideline with great speed athleticism power to stop the run and shows off some cover skills as well for a team like the patriots that knows how to develop linebacker i wouldn't be shocked if cameron mcgrone's a pro bowler in a couple years i think he's that good and they got him in the fifth 
The Buffalo Bills took some chances in this draft, which I think you can because you're already a pretty good team. The Bills are a team that's going to compete out of the AFC to try and get a Super Bowl, especially as Josh Allen keeps developing. But their best pick to me was Spencer Brown. They got Darrell Williams back short term, but Spencer Brown's a guy who is a really, really huge athletic developmental right tackle guy that can come in in two or three years and I think be a really, really good player for them. This is a team that has developed offensive line talent pretty well. Look at Deion Dawkins. They could do the same thing with Spencer Brown. They've got a great tackle pairing in Dawkins and Brown for the future in two, three years. I love the pick. It's so funny with the Miami Dolphins. Chris Greer, the general manager, just basically went down my draft crush list and just drafted all of them. I love Jalen Waddle. I think he was receiver one in the class. I think Jalen Phillips is edge one in the class even with some big injury concerns and Javon Holland was one of my favorite players period even though he was maybe safety too I love him as a player first safety off the board can play nickel corner as well love the pick but to me Jalen Phillips at number 18 is definitely their best pick if he can stay healthy I think it's a big if but it's exceptional value for edge one in the class who could have been a top 10 pick very easily without injury concerns there are the injury concerns there but I do think it's a phenomenal pick. You just need him to stay healthy. The Vikings crushed the draft for me. They were so good about trading down and still acquiring talent. I like the Kellen Mond pick. Trading down and getting Christian Darasaw could easily be their best pick of the draft at 23. But for me, for a team that needed to address guard, getting Wyatt Davis, who can be a plug and play guard for you at number 86 overall, one of the better interior offensive linemen in the entire class. Not the craziest athlete. Maybe that's why he drops a little bit. But as a high floor guy, someone that's going to be good right now, I love Wyatt Davis at 86. The Detroit Lions just did a really good job of taking probably the best player available for them at every single spot. They got good value for these guys. And they said, hey, we know we're not ready to compete right now. We're just going to take the BPA and build the foundations of this team. Panay Sewell, if he can develop into one of the better offensive tackles in the league the way a lot of guys think he can, Great pick at seven. Levi Anzarike is a three tech, fits their defense for the future. And Ali McNeil is a nose tackle, best nose tackle in the class. Great value at 72. But for me, the best pick was Amon Ross St. Brown. I think he's a plus starter in the slot right away. And to get him at 112, I think is very, very good value. He wasn't one of the top receiver prospects in the draft for me or anything, but I think he's going to a really good fit and a guy that can just make an immediate impact in the slot. They have Tyrell Williams and Amon, or not Amon Ross St. Brown, that's, that's who that is. They have Tyrell Williams and Brashad Perriman to play on the outside. Those are their one-year contract guys that can be either your, your X and your Z. But Amon Ross St. Brown, he can be your slot guy and make an impact right away. You could also make a case for value. Derek Barnes is right there. They had back-to-back picks. But I love the draft overall. Lions crush it. I think I was a little bit harsh when I was doing my draft grades for the Packers because I gave them a C plus. And when I look back at this class... Now that I know Josh Myers is going to play center and the whole Elton Jenkins is our center of the future is not true. They're going to play him at guard or at left tackle until David Bakhtiari's back. Josh Myers could be their starting center, you know, at some point in the next two years. So that's a pretty good pick late in the second round. So I, I think their class is actually underrated by me a little bit. It's more like a B, even though NFL Network gave him a C plus like I happen to. I think it's more like a B. And Eric Stokes is my favorite pick of the draft for them. They had some really solid picks in there. Amari Rogers, 85, I think is great. But Eric Stokes, as a super athletic, long cornerback, he's got good size, and he fits the system really, really well. I think he's a perfect corner to go on the other side of Jair Alexander. I just love Eric Stokes as a player, and I think he's going to a really, really good fit. It'd be very easy for a lot of these teams to say, oh, the Jets' best pick was Zach Wilson, QB of the future. Jags' best pick, Trevor Lawrence, QB of the future. Trey Lance, best pick, QB of the future. But I'm not doing that. However, for the Chicago Bears, Tevin Jenkins is in the conversation, but their best pick was Justin Fields. Getting one of the better players in the entire draft, I had him a top five player. I had him as a top five player overall. Getting him at number 11 is not only tremendous value, he plays the most important position. I think you got your franchise quarterback. You traded a first round pick next year to do it, but I think it's well worth it. If Justin Fields can turn into the type of player that a lot of guys, including myself, think Justin Fields can turn into, this is a phenomenal pick. This was kind of a toss up for me because I love Greg Newsom at 26. If he stays healthy, unbelievable selection. I think Greg Newsom could have been one of the better corners in the class. Why? Well, I do think he's a better cornerback in the class, one of the better Q CBs. Uh, if he was healthy, he might have been CB1. I love Greg Newsom that much as a player. 
Injury concerns probably drop him to 26. Great value for the Browns if he stays healthy. But their best pick was JOK. He had a heart condition. That's why he fell. This came out. But he was cleared by doctors. To get a first-round player, number 14 in the draft for me, as a total prospect, to get him at 52? Are you kidding me? What an unbelievable pick for the Browns. Jeremiah owusu Koromoa, Just phenomenal, spectacular, fantastic, unbelievable, whatever adjective you want to throw in there. I think Jeremiah owusu Koromoa fits for the Browns at 52. I like the Ravens draft. Rashad Bateman at 27 is great value. Odafe Owe, if they can develop him, is a really high upside pick at 31. To me, their best pick was Tylen Wallace. I thought he was a top 10 receiver in the class. For him to be available at number 131 is just crazy to me. They have some talented receivers in there now. Rashad Bateman as your typical X receiver. I think Hollywood can play that slot to Z type role where he rotates depending on the formation you want to throw out there, depending on the look. But Tylen Wallace as your developmental Z, your guy that can come in and be a receiver too and be a chain mover and just not drop the football and offer you some stuff after the catch as well. I love Tylen Wallace. I love it, love it, love it, love it. He is your super upgraded Willie Sneed because he does everything that Willie Sneed does well, which is not drop the football in general, but he offers better size, better route running ability, better jump ball ability. I think Tylen Wallace in the late fourth is a huge steal. Steelers fans are getting on me because I don't love the Najee Harris pick at 24. I get that you needed to address running back, and Najee Harris was my best running back in the class. Why don't I like the pick? I think center, I think tackle were bigger needs. I think cornerback was a massive need. I would have loved Greg Newsom to the Steelers at 24, honestly, or one of the better tackles available. I think that there were definitely some tackles they could have taken a shot at, like Liam Eikenberg at 24, I think would have worked. Landon Dickerson, if you want to center, even Creed Humphrey at 24, even though he dropped to the end of the second. I think those guys would have been really good picks for them just because of the value that they hold when running back is a fairly replaceable position. However, I don't hate the Najee Harris pick. I think he's a really good player. This was another one I was really harsh on, somewhat unfairly. Pat Fryermuth, I hate in the second though. I mean, just why are you taking a tight end there? When Creed Humphrey's available, I don't understand it. They got their center in Kendrick Green in round three. That's great. He's going to play center. But their best pick to me was Quincy Roche. I love Quincy Roche at the end of the sixth. This is a pass rusher who's pretty athletic off the edge. Flashed at the Senior Bowl as well. Alex Leatherwood, first round pick of the Raiders, number 17 overall. Alex Leatherwood got handed his lunch by Quincy Roche off the edge on day one. Roche just beat him up in the one-on-ones. He was too fast. His moves were too good. Leatherwood couldn't handle it. Did come back day two and was much better against him. But Quincy Roche has big time potential. He is a developmental edge, but you have everything you want in a developmental edge with the size, with the athleticism, with the burst off the edge. Offers some good pass rush moves as well. I love Quincy Roche and you got him late in the sixth. Are you kidding me? What a pick by the Steelers. The Bengals was a little bit tougher to find their best pick. I just think they had a solid draft overall, but... I don't think we're going to say Jamar Chase was their best value pick at number five overall. Great player, best player they took in the draft, but at number five overall, all right, you're expected to get a really good player. Jackson Carmen is not exactly an unbelievable pick at number 14 in the second. You're going to move a tackle over to guard, maybe high hopes for him, but, you know, not their best pick. Cameron Sample I like a lot, but I think their best pick was Joseph Osai. They needed a rotational edge rusher with off-ball capability, and that is Joseph Osai to a T. You bring in Trey Hendrickson, you need someone else on the edge. I think Joseph Osai is someone who can rotate both as like a typical 4-3 Sam and down as an edge rusher on certain rushdowns. Love Joseph Osai. I think he's their best pick, of course. That's my Texas Longhorns fan bias, but I love the pick for the Bengals at number 69 overall. Nice. The Saints were very tough on their draft, or the fans at least, excuse me. But I don't mind Peyton Turner at 28. I think he has super, super high upside. If the Saints took Rousseau, I don't think anyone complains, and Peyton Turner is a higher upside player in my opinion, and I think he's better right now. Pete Warner is really not that bad of a pick at number 28, but their best pick by a mile to me was Paulson Adebo. Like, he has the ability to hang with anybody in man on the boundary for a third round pick and i think he has some of the better zone instincts of any corner in the draft i think he excels in zone coverage i love paulson debo in the saints system i think he's a perfect corner to complement marshawn Lattimore. this is just an excellent pick and to get him at number 76 overall just great value for a great fit they needed to address corner they didn't do it in round one didn't do it in round two but they got a really good one in the middle of round three
I see so many people in my comment section saying, oh, thank you for giving the Panthers credit. Everyone said the draft was terrible. I go, what are you talking about? How could anyone view this draft class as terrible? Terrace Marshall at the back end of the second is phenomenal. Brady Christensen can earn his way into being the starting left tackle. JC Horn, top 10. It's really not bad value. Tommy Tremble could be a starting tight end. Truba Hubbard is a great change of pace back, is awesome for the Panthers. To me, their best pick, though, was Davion Nixon. You could even say Deontay Brown. I think Deontay Brown, where he was drafted, was great value as a guy that can be a starting right guard in a couple of years. Shai Smith in the sixth as someone that can come in and be a rotational slot guy. I love that. But Davion Nixon in the fifth could be your three tech. There were some apparent character concerns with him but as a player he was great breakout season big 10 defensive player of the year last year love davion nixon he's one of the pass rushers in this class on the interior of the defensive line that can actually get after the quarterback there were few d tackles that actually had pass rush prowess and davion nixon was one of the guys that did have the pass rush prowess to be effective rushing from that three tech spot on the defensive line i love davion nixon as a player and i think in the fifth it's just exceptional value you know, the Bucks were a team that just didn't overwhelm me in the draft. I just think they took pretty good players at the appropriate spot. Joe Tryon, I think he has big time potential. Took him at the back end of the first, last pick in the first round. But to me, their best pick was Jalen Darden. They're taking a shot at a high upside receiver that will bring return value, I think, immediately. And as a rotational slot guy, I said Scotty Mitchell in one of my videos. You got to respect that I haven't slept in a week with all this draft coverage. You've seen how many videos I put out. But he can replace Scotty Miller, potentially. I think Jalen Darden has higher upside than Scotty Miller. Way better athlete. Way better after the catch. Darden has big-time upside. And if they lose Chris Godwin and they lose Antonio Brown after 2021, what do you have left? Mike Evans and Scotty Miller? I think Jalen Darden can definitely compete for a lot of playtime in 2022. I know they have, uh, what is it? They have Tyler. Why am I missing out on his name? Tyler, Tyler, Tyler Johnson really tough name to think of there johnson no one has that last name but yeah jalen darden someone i think is is really good value in the fourth and he super high upside i can't say that the falcons best pick was kyle pitts even though he's clearly the best player that they got i think richie grant all things considered was their best pick i had him at about 40 overall in the draft i think i had him at 38 so i like the value of the pick and as a versatile defensive back that they can play in a number of different areas, whether it's over the top, in the box, or even in the nickel, I think Richie Grant has the chops to play man coverage in the slot. I like the pick a lot. Richie Grant is a really, really good player. Pretty good ball skills in general as well. Jalen Mayfield in the third is pretty good value too. Drew Dahlman in the fourth, pretty good value as well. But I like Richie Grant to upgrade the defense, which was a really, really big need. They didn't address it too much. But Richie Grant, definitely the best defensive player, in my opinion, that they drafted. I like the pick a lot. To me, the Titans' best pick is not particularly hard to find. Caleb Farley's easy to say just because he's a, a really good player that fell to 22 because of injury concern. And with the logic of Jalen Phillips being the Dolphins' best pick, Farley makes sense. Monty Rice in the third is pretty good value, too. I like Monty Rice as a player. But to me, Elijah Molden at number 100 as a nickel corner that can play safety and be... Kind of like a Kenny Vaccaro type player for the Titans, if you guys know how the Titans use Kenny Vaccaro. I like Elijah Molden to Tennessee a lot. Him being available at number 100 was pretty unbelievable to me. I thought he was a guy that was probably going to go top 60, top 65 at the worst. He fell big time to the end of the third round, was taken with a compensatory selection. I love Elijah Molden to Tennessee, and they really needed to address their secondary. And to get Caleb Farley for the boundary, that's your Dory Jackson replacement. And to get Elijah Molden as your nickel slash safety flexible type guy, love it for Tennessee. The best player that Houston took to me was Nico Collins, but they traded up so much to get him. Brevin Jordan was their best pick. They stuck Pat at number three overall in the fifth round, number 147. Got one of the better tight ends in the class. I know I've said it a million times. I think Brevin Jordan's more of an H-back than a true tight end, but... Even though he didn't test particularly well, his relative athletic score is not super high. I like Brevin Jordan as a player. I think the tape speaks for itself. He's a guy you can use in a number of different ways. One of the more versatile guys in the draft. And of course, I do like him as a straight up Jonu Smith comparison. Maybe not quite the athlete that Jonu Smith is, but I think has the potential to be a similar type of player. Fans have been mad about how I've rated the Colts draft class as a whole. Listen, everyone wants to be super happy with your draft class. 
some were saying Deo Odeyengbo could be a first round pick, and that was some of the most wild shit I've ever heard, excuse the language. Just was never gonna happen. Listen, you can be a fan of your team's draft and not just lie. Deo Odeyengbo was not gonna go first round. It was never going to happen. I think it's a fine pick for value wise, but uh, the Colts, they didn't do amazingly. They didn't do terribly in the grand scheme of things. I think it was one of the worst draft class that there was, even though I respect the hell out of Chris Ballard as a GM. Dude's a stud. Quiddy Pay was their best pick to me. Just good value for him at 21 overall. He's an elite run stopper. He fits the defense so well, and I think he's going to develop a lot as a pass rusher. He has really good hands already. Just got to start using them more as a rusher. Love Quiddy Pay as a player. I think he's going to be great for the Colts. Just, I mean, you look at the rest of this and you go, they didn't really do anything spectacular, which is why I ranked them lower. Again, I talked about this earlier. It's easy to say Trevor Lawrence is the best pick the Jags made because it's Trevor Lawrence at number one overall. But to me, their best pick was Andre Sisco. This was a team that really needed to invest in a, a safety that can play over the top. Andre Sisco is a super freak athlete with good size and with good ability to play over the top. They needed that. They didn't go with Trayvon Berg with either of these two picks. I think he was available at both and not even 25 either. Trayvon Merrick would have been a really good fit for them, but I don't mind Andre Sisco at the top of the third. I think it was the best pick they made for value, and he fits an immediate need. I think he'll compete to start nearly right away. The San Francisco 49ers, a team going into the draft, needed to find their franchise quarterback, clearly not Jimmy Garoppolo, and needed to replace some big-time players that they lost at cornerback. In, well, Richard Sherman was past his prime, but Akella Witherspoon is a bigger loss. You look at Jason Verrett signing a one-year deal, and he's injured all the time anyway. They needed to address cornerback in some way, and they did with Ambry Thomas. But to me, the best pick that they made was Ambry Thomas. I have Ambry Thomas written down. I, I, I thought I might have gone somewhere else. Might have gone Trey Lance because I love the pick. But Ambry Thomas is just really good value at the back end of the third. Another team that just hit on a compensatory selection. They did so in a really good way. Ambry Thomas, I think, is really good value at 102. I love him as a player, and I think he fits the 49ers defense really, really well, at least what they ran under Robert Sala. Not sure how it's going to change, admittedly, but I think he can play press coverage. I think he's one of the better press man guys in the draft. Showcase that at the Senior Bowl. I like Ambry Thomas as a player. I think he's a good pick in the third. The Seahawks only had three picks. If you watch my worst pick that every team made in the draft... You probably already know who I'm going with here for the best because by default, it's a 50 50 shot. I love the Dwayne Eskridge pick. I think the best pick they made was Stone Forsyth. This was a team that needed to upgrade their offensive line, and Stone Forsyth was just way too good to be available at 208, simply put. So it looks like Seattle moved up a lot to get him or moved up through multiple teams to get him. That pick traded hands a lot. But I love Forsyth as a player and at almost the seventh round you really can't go wrong with that the arizona cardinals am i going with a biased selection for who is their best pick of the draft yes and no tay gallon in the in the sixth was way too good to be available i love the james wiggins pick as well i think he's going to be a good player and to get him in the seventh round good value but tay gallon based on their cornerback depth chart i think will compete to start within a year I like Gowan as a player, only one year of tape at UCF. Of course, if you see my video on the channel where myself and Tay Gowan went over some of his tape at UCF, super nice guy, so humble, so just a sweet guy. There's not really much else to say about that, but I think it was actually their best pick, all things considered. If you've watched the channel for a while, you know I'm unbiased. I will say if I think a, a team good or did good or badly, I, if the Giants made a bad pick, I'll tell you about it. They've done it. I've been super critical of the Giants, and for good reason. They've been bad. They've been a bad team. And for teams that I don't like, the Cowboys, Washington football team, the Eagles, I've congratulated them when they've made great picks and done really good things as they have this past year. So I'm unbiased. But Tay Gowan, I just think he was the best pick here. This was a guy who probably could have gone as high as the third round and just be sitting there at the end of the sixth as a guy that can play press man with anybody, has the long, deep speed that you covet at the position, and has a length. That you like at the position as well, 6-2. Tay Gowan in the sixth is just great. Admittedly, I did not love the Rams draft class when I first looked at it. And every other time I've looked at it, I feel the same way. <laughs> I just didn't love the class. They took some chances on some players. Jacob Harris, Bobby Brown is cool. Ernest Jones in the third is whatever. I think their best pick was Robert Rochelle. 
underrated corner coming out of Central Arkansas. It makes sense. But he's a good rotational cornerback for them right away. And honestly, it's tough to find a great pick for them. But I think Robert Rochelle at the end of the fourth was their best pick. It was easy to be critical of the Raiders after day one when they took Alex Leatherwood at 17, which really isn't the worst pick in the world. I just think there were better players for them on the board. I understand the injury concerns not taking Trayvon Merrick at number 17 and not taking JOK at number 17, but despite him being an unbelievable fit for the defense. I don't know why they didn't take Christian Darasaw, probably because he didn't go to Clemson or Alabama. But to me, the Raiders really didn't do too poorly. Their favorite pick of mine was Trayvon Merrick. He actually did go at number 11. So he was not available for the Jags when they took Walker Little. But Trayvon Merrick is a really, really good safety. Safety one in the class for me. I think he's a stud, versatile guy that can play over the top in the box or in the nickel. Same type of thing with Richie Grant, but I think at a higher level. Love Merrick as a player. And the Raiders really, 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 really needed to address safety. And they did it at number 43 overall. I know he fell because of a back injury. But this is just a great value pickup in the second. Love Tyree Gillespie, too. I think Divine Diablo fits the defense really well. The Raiders did pretty well in the draft. The Chiefs are another team that did fairly well in the draft. Nothing, like, mind-blowing. Just some really good value picks. To me, their best pickup could easily be Creed Humphrey at the back end of the second to be a starting center after Austin Blythe, who presumably is going to play center in 2021. After his one-year contract expires, Creed Humphrey immediate starter in 2022 nick bolton as a guy that can be a starting linebacker got him at number 58 great value even noah gray could be a stud at number 162 great value for him but to me their best pick was trey smith you have a guy that can be a swing guard or potential swing tackle so based on injury he can come in and start for any of those positions has played tackle and did so at a high level as a high recruit headed to tennessee and then had some really good guard tape over the past couple years when healthy he dropped due to some blood clot problem so he was a medical red flag i think a lot of teams took him off their board completely but getting trey smith if he stays healthy and he's the caliber of player that he can be getting him at 226 is the steal of the draft trey smith has potential to be a starting guard or in my opinion even tackle for a long time love trey smith as a player the rich get richer i was wondering where this player was going to go in the draft and the broncos took him and i said hey that's just a perfect fit there were a lot of guys who wanted him to go earlier but to me Jamar Johnson probably was not going to go before the fourth round. However, I think at 164, deep in the fifth, Jamar Johnson is just incredible value. Love him as a player. I think he reminds me a lot of what Kareem Jackson has turned into. So if you take Jamar Johnson, who isn't the biggest safety in the world, not the most athletic safety, but just plays the game the right way in the fact that he, he can be moved all over the field, do all these different things, has phenomenal instincts, can tackle, can rush the quarterback in some cases as a safety blitzer. Jamar Johnson really does it all. Isn't the best deep speed guy to play over the top, but has done so and has been effective because he's so, so good back there instinctually. I love Jamar Johnson, and I see him as an easy Kareem Jackson replacement in a couple years. Jamar Johnson the fifth is just great for a guy that can be an impact starter for you in a couple years down the road. And last, but certainly not least, we have the LA Chargers who did very, very well in the draft overall. And you could very easily say that Rashawn Slater was their best pick getting him at 13 is just awesome but i'm gonna go with asante samuel jr i'm not gonna call it a steal or anything just because i think his value is about you know top 40 or top 45 so i think getting him at 47 it's, it's really solid value it isn't the steal of the draft or anything but getting a player like asante samuel jr with his skill set as an off man corner that can play on the boundary has nickel flexibility as well even though he's a little bit smaller i think he's a boundary cornerback i think he fits the chargers defensive scheme really really well you can keep chris harris in the slot i love the asante samuel jr pick to the chargers really really solid selection by them fits the system to a t he's going to be exceptional really really good pick and that is going to do it for the best pick made by every team in the 2021 nfl draft according to me you can value that if you want i've done hundreds and hundreds of hours of film session over the past six to seven months but i get that everyone views players differently and if you're a fan base you don't want me saying anything negative about your team i fully understand it but that is the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already for more draft content and NFL content down the line. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.